Um, in Touch is primarily uh, it's about uh, the internet. Um, it's about uh, how how we use it, um, and and really how um, how it's kind of affecting us on sort of the the physiological level as as like people. How it's affecting, say, our memories, our short term memory span. Um, how it affects our relationships. Um, you know how, how if you try and you know date on the internet or take it one step further, can you love through the internet? It's, it kind of kind of ticks all of those things really, and basically you know, it looks at, at how much uh, increasing time we're spending on it, all in through the medium of musical comedy. It is a comedy, I should add. So, yeah, I kind of fell into it really. Um, uh, I, I was an actor. I, I went to um, Mountview. And I've done basically sort of the West End musical circuit, uh, pretty much. A bit of rep theatre, um, but um, I did, yeah, West End musicals for, for eight years. Um, uh, some some big ones, some small ones. Uh, played a you know working jobbing actor basically was how I earned my trade. And towards the end of that time, I started writing Departure Lounge, and, and that was really more fun than anything. And put it on just you know as you do, you put it on for your friends and family in a very small in the Landor Theatre actually. Um, this is back in 2005, um, and, and it, sometimes, you know, you, you just need people to encourage you, I think, in something, and you realise you, you can do it, you realise you, you've, got, you've got something that, that people want to get behind and push forward. And, well, I think it it's, um, it's really reflects the background I come from. I mean, I, I, I heard my first musical, I think, when I was about 20 or 21. Um, I, I, uh, for some reason, I shunned going to the theatre when I was growing up. Um, I was more into sport. I was going to be a psychologist, I trained in psychology, I was going to be a sports psychologist. Um, and my brother was always into the acting and my parents would often offer to take me to the theatre and I think I just, I just kind of didn't, wasn't interested, I didn't go. And I remember living with, with a bunch of my mates uh, at university who were all sitting around watching the Les Mis um, anniversary performance like, endlessly on video and I used to just leave the room and be like, I can't stand it. And then, I don't know when the bug, the bug hit me actually when I, when I sort of, my housemate was involved in a production of chess. I ended up getting um, bitten by that, and I just totally fell in love with, with musicals. But I had all this kind of previous life where I was not interested in it at all, and I had, in essence, a sort of more normal or more popularist background of listening to bands, going to gigs, going to the football. Um, when I finished university in '99, uh, uh, Cambridge University, I was at Birmingham, but um, I had some a friend of mine was at Cambridge, and they said we're doing a Sondheim musical, Assassins. Would you like to come um, as a performer? Because I was, I was sort of doing little bits of amateur performance by then, and it was amazing. I had the most amazing time. We did Sondheim back to back with uh, a brand new musical that was written, and we won two. Well, the, the the Sondheim we got four stars, four or five stars, really great. And with the same team, we got one star, and we won the award for show that most inspired fantasies of murdering the cast for the other show. So it was like a classic Edinburgh experience. We had a hit and a flop. I think they've just got to, they've got to sleep like solidly for six months beforehand or something. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you just, you can't, you kind of, you've got to take as much, you've got to get as much out of it as you possibly can. I think you've got to, if you're going up performing, um, you've got to be prepared to, to muck in, to, to fly out, to, to, um, to, to go up to strangers and just do something silly. You've got to be prepared to, to, to get, you know, to get attention. Um, because if you just sort of sit back and wait for them to come to you, it won't happen. I think my apprenticeship of writing was really performing because I was involved, I got, as a performer I got to work on some of the, the biggest, best shows really up there. Miss Saigon was my first show, I was, I was ensemble in the first, um, the tour of that uh, and that was amazing and, like, to work with like Joanna um, Ample and, and, and Leo Valdez, um, just total professionals and also I got to work with Claude Michel Schoenberg as well who is just the most lovely guy in the world and he doesn't read music. Uh, he, he told us a great story uh, about him uh, totally putting the crescendo in Buidoy at the start of Act 2 because he leant over to pick up the phone and knock the failure by accident and it just bumped the volume up and he went, oh that's good, I'll put that in. You know, his, it was really inspiring I think to see the, the humanity I think in someone you know, who, who's, who's written you know, two of the biggest shows ever. Um, so Miss Sogon was amazing, uh, Rent was, was great because that, that's very contemporary, uh, modern, modern rock. Um, I, I recently, I did a couple of Sondheims at Pacific Overtures um, at Leicester Haymarket, which again is just it's, it's so good to work on a Sondheim because you, you don't really get it until you actually really work on it and really go into it and you really sort of get 
the sort of the level of the, of the guy's brain and, and, and the book writer as well. Um, <clears throat> and then um, my most recent big show was Wicked. Um, and that was, again, like to see something which kind of combines elements of, of the other sh of, of the sort of uh, the legitimacy of Sondheim and, and with, with the kind of the modern accessibility of pop music as well. You know, so I've got a good range of, of shows that I've kind of been able to work on and just sort of, you, you, you kind of just absorb the scores and the music in you and you get a feel of the pace of the storytelling. And when something's in a massive theatre, it's 300, 3,000 seats, there's no point writing a really necessarily witty banter line that kind of that, 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 that takes place over a really, really short space because the, the joke just won't land for 3,000 people. Um, if you look at Popular as a song from Wicked, it's so well crafted and the, and the, 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 the laughter points and the rise and fall is, is crafted. It's not crafted for a small audience, it can never be done to 120, it, would just, it just wouldn't work, it's bigger than that. Um, and Miss Saigon's a very expansive score as well, so you kind of pick up instincts of how to shape music and shape words to, to really to fill the kind of space you're writing for. 